Hello everyone, my name is Ayla Teslermabe, and this lesson is all about the iconic solo in Back in Black by ACDC. But today, I wanted to focus a little bit more on how to actually authentically sound like Angus Young because it's not just about the notes you play, it's how you play them. The finesse, you know, the vibrato, you know, all the little details that I want to point out to you to help you get that much closer to sounding like Angus Young. I think we're going to learn a lot about just really tasteful guitar playing, because as far as rock guitar players go, he's definitely one of the most tasteful out there. So let's go. So section one, the solo opens with this motif. <laughs> And you might be able to hear, this is all pedaling the low E string. Landing on the seventh fret of the A. Fifth fret. Fourth fret. But it's very important to take note of the amount of emphasis that is put on that low E string. Pick it pretty hard. And it's definitely palm muted. That's a huge part of it. But I think the number one most important thing to take note of here is the really tasty vibrato. It's pretty fast and wide, and again, if I play it without vibrato, if or, or if I play it with not so good vibrato, and compare that to what I think sounds a little bit better. Already that sounds so much more authentic. It's an amazing way to open the solo and a great way to work on your vibrato as well. Once you get that down, there's this really tasty look where you come up, you know, seventh fret on the A string, then fifth fret, seventh fret on the D string. And this lick here, it might take a bit of practice to get this down because what I'm doing is hammering on with my pinky to the 8th fret and pulling off and pulling off to the 5th fret and then hammering back on. And, you know, if that's a little bit too tricky right now, I think you could even try switching your fingers around like this so that you're hammering on with your you know, ring finger here, because some people have more strength in that finger. But if you can get to a point where you can use your pinky like that, it's pretty simple. You know, you just hammer on, pull off, all that good stuff. And it's very important, I think, to actually land on that last note there, because you can hear it's, it's more articulated than the other ones. And uh, that's the lick right there. Again, palm muted. That's a really important part of it. And then we come back to what I think is the low E string twice in a row. It's kind of hard to hear. That's the beauty of this solo. It's uh, kind of buried in the mix in a very cool way. And I think that's part of the whole, you know, sound of it. And that's a great thing. But once you come back down to this motif again. First time. And now we get into the main part of the solo. And this part, you know, you can hear it. we're playing the seventh fret of the G string, but it's syncopated, sort of coming in on the off beat, and it almost sounds like there's some ghost notes in there as well. And that's when you, you know, have your finger on the string, but you're not putting pressure. And then you get that kind of muted sound. And this is the most important thing. I hear a lot of people sometimes neglect to include this detail, but what makes that lick so amazing is the vibrato on that bent note. And being able to add vibrato to bent notes is a huge part of Angus Young's playing. It sounds so good. Um, and I found on most guitarists, actually bending the string downwards, adding vibrato that way, Sounds really great, but on this guitar in particular, of course I'm playing on an SG, which is very authentic to the ACDC sound, bending up works well, especially because it's a wider neck. But try both ways, either way. You bend the note, you let it sit there for a second, and then you try to add some vibrato, just like that. And 
that's an important point. The vibrato, it's all about the vibrato. Uh, and once we've got that down, I'm gonna play that lick one more time, uh, and then we're gonna move on to the next section. So we have. Here's the next line. And small details, but important. Sliding into that ninth fret on the G string, and then coming up to the eighth fret of the B. And then, sometimes I hear people play, you know, that ninth fret twice in a row. That doesn't sound bad at all. In fact, I actually think that sounds great. But I think it sounds even better and more authentic. If you first bend that seventh fret, you know, bend up to the note and sort of like choke it before bending down. Up to that ninth fret, add some sweet vibrato. And then the next line. It's kind of similar to what we were doing down the octave earlier. Adding the blues note in there, the blue note, the sharp four. And this is where we're going to again be doing some hammer on and pull offs. To this next lick. And again, landing on that ninth fret of the G string, I think there's a little bit of a ghost note in there. Where the ghost note is sandwiched between, you know, the two times you pick that G string. So before I proceed further, let's quickly recap what we got so far. I'll play along slowly, check out the tab, but this is what we have. Let's go to the next lick. Cool pentatonic movement. Now we're up in this pentatonic box. And that's where we'll be for most of the rest of the solo. And, you know, we're starting here at the 12th fret of the G string, 14th fret of the D string, back to that 12th fret again. There we go, that's <laughs> better the second time. But here's a very important detail. There's a slight cheeky bend here on that 12th fret. Because if I don't include that, still sounds right, playing all the right notes, but you can hear that subtle little bend. And that's a huge aspect of Angus Young playing. A lot of rock guitar and blues guitar players use this. Those little bends sound so nice. And then we have this very, very cool kind of like train bend, train horn bend. I don't know, you could call it something like that. Where you have, you know, a finger planted, in this case at the 15th fret of the B string using your pinky, and we're bending here at the 14th fret of the G string. And once you bend, you hit that B string and you want to hear them ring out together. And you hear some really nice vibrato on that, you know, last hit. And then we release it. You know, bringing that bend back down. And this is a really common way to come down from a bend in this position of the pentatonic scale. Pull off immediately to that 12th fret. And so that lick all together. that. Let's move on to the next part. And again, pretty palm muted. And it starts with this double stop here at the 12th fret of the G string and B string. Coming down to that 14th fret of the D string. And again, the first time I just played that, I accidentally added too many double stops. Everything else is single notes. And you can hear, 
you know, it keeps coming back to that 14th fret of the D string. And again, palm muted. It's picked pretty hard, I think. Uh, and if we put that together with the previous section, this is what we have. And then, we end with this lick. And again, it's one of those cool bends where, you know, we're here at the 14th fret of the G string. Pinky on the B string. And I, I don't think it would be wrong to play them together there. I sometimes end up doing that by accident, just out of habit. But I do think you hear that last note, you know, on its own, going back to that G string. And it's very important to slide down like that. And that's setting us up really nicely for the next part. This is probably my favorite line of the whole solo, this really cool pentatonic run. And it starts with 12th fret of the B string, and then the high E string. And then two really nice bends on that 15th fret of the B string. And you definitely want to be adding some vibrato on there. And then we kind of fall down the stairs here and then land on our feet. And again, this is an example of how it can be a little tricky at times to hear exactly what's going on. I'm going to show you two approaches you can try. I think both sound very authentic and very nice. Um, and what happens is you can start by playing that 12th fret of the high E string. And then you pull off from the 15th fret to the 12th fret on the B string. And then with that line, 14th fret of the G string, 12th fret of the B string, and then land on the 12th, 12th fret of the G string. And I think that's the most articulate way to play it, where you're picking that note and that note. But sometimes when I listen to it, it almost sounds like that note isn't picked and it's just a pull off a hammer on and a pull off and that requires you to really hammer on quite strongly with that finger because it almost sounds like he isn't picking there however there's a chance that won't come out as articulately you might need to really crank the gain there to have that ring out so now let me compare those two so you can hear the difference here is where i pick you know the e string and the b string and here is without that Try both, see what you like. Either way, the whole phrase would sound like this slowly. And I think really it's the vibrato that sells it and the timing of the riff more than anything. If you even play different notes in that, in that run there and still had the timing right, I think that would sound really accurate either way. But again, the vibrato on that bend. That's what sells it. But now let's move on to the next part. And again, we're doing more of those train horn bends, if we want to give that an official name. And what happens here is you're going to want to bar a little bit with your pinky there so that you can cover the B string and the E string. And as you can hear there, I'm bending twice. Uh, and I hit the B string, and then the second time I hit the high E string. And that's a classic fall off from that. Where you come down from the bend, pull off to the 12th fret. And I would definitely add some nice vibrato on that last note. That's what that lick sounds like. All right, and the next line sounds like this. Lots of double stops, palm muted still, and I almost feel like you should down pick the whole thing. That helps you get the attack you're looking for. And you're just going back and forth, you know, pedaling that 
14th fret of the D string. And then you do, you know, 12th fret of the G string and B string. And then double stop here on the 14th fret. And then back to the 12th fret again. But here's the thing, if you can, add in those little cheeky bends here, again on the double stops on the 12th fret, sometimes adds a really nice character. Really subtle, but again, I feel like Angus Young does this a lot in his playing, and it's definitely worth working on and implementing it, especially in that section. And then after that, we have... more of the same kind of bend. And what's really important here is when you come down, landing with a lot of vibrato. And again, having this note ring out clearly enough that you hear both of them at the same time. And that is that little section. Let's move on to the other favorite part of the solo for me. Sounds like this. And the reason this is my favorite, and this is an important detail that I don't hear enough people talking about. When you come up to that 15th fret of the B string and you bend, it's somewhere between a regular bend where you just bend the note up and a pre-bend where the note is already bent before you play it. It almost sounds like he starts the note slightly flat and then bends up to it and adds like the sweetest vibrato ever. So I would definitely approach it that way because that sounds great, but this sounds closer. And then this run here, it's hard to nail the timing of it. It's triplets, da 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 da. Triple it, triple it, bah. And then, it's very similar to what we had before, where, you know, we have 12th fret coming down to a pull off from the 15th fret to the 12th fret. And again, you could try to get more articulation by picking both of those notes, but it kind of sounds like he doesn't. And that requires you to really forcefully hammer on here so that you have enough force to have the string ring out the way you want it to. And then, don't do what I just did the first time, do what I did the second time. And again, when you get to that 12th fret of the G string, I would recommend trying a cheeky little bend there because if I play it without, that's nice, but with just a really nice detail. And you definitely want to pick those last two notes because they seem quite articulate with how they ring out. And again, slowly. One, I got it wrong. I got it right the first two times. You've heard it enough. That's the lick. We're back to the same motif we kind of looked at the beginning, but now we're an octave higher. This is what the next section sounds like. So we have this nice walk down. Let's start with just looking at the G string. We have you know, the 9th fret to the 7th fret. And then you play the last note as normal. Same sort of idea here. You know, 7th fret to the 6th fret. And then uh, the 6th fret to the 4th fret. But you can also hear some other strings ringing out. It's a little sloppy almost, but in a way that obviously is amazing. There's nothing wrong with that, you know? That's part of the rock and roll sound. But 
this leads me to think there are a few different ways to approach this. Because if I just pick it normally and I, you know, try to get the B string and E string ringing out. It sounds cool, but that doesn't sound quite right, you know, considering what you hear in the original. In the original, it kind of only sounds like the high E string is ringing out. That's why I sometimes hybrid pick this. Because that allows me to just play the G string and the high E string. But again, when you see Angus Young play it live, it seems like he's picking normally. So, I almost feel like it's kind of random. And again, kind of sloppy in a cool way. Alternatively, you could play it on the fifth fret of the B string. And then, you'd be able to just get the notes you're looking for in the high E string about the B string, ringing out. But, you know, I, I think you do what's right for you. I, I usually hybrid pick it, like I said, or I'll just play like this and accept that it's gonna sound kind of uh, all over the place, again, in a rock and roll way. But the vibrato is very important here, just like when we were playing it at the beginning of the solo. Time you land on you know an end of a phrase lots of vibrato and that's why I strongly suggest using your third finger as much as possible because that allows you to put the other fingers on the string behind it to have more support to get that nice vibrato in there we have this cool lick here that's a classic rock and roll sound of course you know, starting with a, a bend on, on the G string. And again, it's one of those bends where you don't hear it come back down. It just, you know, chokes at the top. And you play the 12th fret of the B string and E string. And then a bend on that B string 15th fret. Definitely a nice vibrato on there. And if you listen to the original, the vibrato on that note in particular almost sounds kind of erratic and out of tune. But again, in a very cool way. I don't know, you could play around with all sorts of, uh, you know, different things like faster vibrato, wider vibrato, try to be a little bit under the pitch as well. That could be something cool to try. Just, you know, try all of those out. Listen to the original, see what you like. But again, it's kind of erratic uh, in this case, which is... I think what sells the lick. And we're almost done. One more time, we repeat. And that very last line, it's pretty hard to hear. It's very buried in the mix, but I think it sounds a little something like, you know, one of those train horn bends, where this time you bend it and you actually hear it come back down come back up again and a nice slide down so again that whole last section would be like this and then you're back into the chorus of the song that was the iconic back in black guitar solo angus young acdc so great, so much to learn about tasty guitar playing from learning this solo. And I hope this helped you sound a little bit more authentic to the original. And this is the first time I've ever done a video quite like this, breaking down a solo like this. So let me know down below if you enjoyed it. And if you did, what other songs you'd want me to break down like this. And I hope you have a fantastic and wonderful day. Bye.